Hi guys, this is Corey with Sellercore.com, the free auction template editor. We've been talking about the CSS editor found inside of the free Sellercore software. We had discussed text effects, borders, background, sizing, and now we're going to talk about spacing. Spacing certainly has the more advanced options in there, so don't get discouraged. If you know how to use them, great. If not, maybe play with them. Don't use them at all. Just wanted to touch on them so you know what you can do with them and what you can expect out of them. So to dive right in, go to our template. This is just Cellicore CSS's awesome text inside of a real simple div. That way we can add CSS style to this. Double click in there, hit edit CSS style. So we'll go to our spacing tab. So pretty straightforward. We have margin padding display, text align, vertical align, position, float clear, top right, bottom left, and an option to auto center. And of course we have our preview and it tells us that there's no CSS currently being applied. So for this example, I'm just going to turn on a background color so we can see what's going on. Spacing. So I'm going to talk about these in order of most obvious to most, most difficult. So start off with margin and padding. Margin is the outside of our element. <coughs> Excuse me. Padding is the inside. So if I set this to 15 pixels, you'll see that now we have 15 pixels on all four sides. You can't see the bottom because there's nothing below it. But if we were to put something below this, it would add 15 pixels. Padding, same thing, except it's inside of our element. So now anything inside, all four sides, 15 pixels. There's 15 pixels over here. Our content doesn't go all the way over, but it would wrap when it, before it hit the 15 pixel mark. So I can open these up, hit the little pluses. And once again, like other options, I can, I can change top, right, bottom, left, all the way around. So if I wanted the rest to be 15, but the top to be 50 pixels, you can see that now that put 50 pixels here and the rest is still 15. And the same with padding. Padding would say I wanted to do 150 pixels in there. You can see this moved it over 150 pixels. Now padding, this will affect anything inside this div. It's an image, another span, another div. It will affect this 15 or this padding of 150. So if I were to space down here, my next row won't start over here. It's always going to have that 15, 150 uh, pixel padding all the way down. So let's reset this. We'll just delete those and put this back to 15. So next thing, we'll close these up. Next thing I want to talk about is the text align. Now text align, we have the option left, right, center, justify. Click right. Now you would think that this actually is telling the text to go right or the text to go center. What this is actually doing is telling it to center everything inside of this div or send right everything inside of this div. So not just text this is a, the css is actually called text align but if i could put a if i put a picture in here or another div or a span or a table anything else i put in here it would align its center unless something else about that object told it to go somewhere else so pretty straightforward i put it in, i put text align and spacing because because of how it spaces things inside of this div so put that back to left or default is left just turn it off entirely so I want to talk about centering now. So, we'll put it back to center for a second. Talk about centering now. So, by default, the divs are block level that go all the way across the screen. You can't center this when it's 100% of the screen. So, in order to do that, and it tells you here, may require width and display settings. Display settings be this one, and of course, width would be over here. We just talked about that. If I set this to 300 pixels, it wants to go to the left and the top by default. So you'll see there's no margin here and there's no margin down there. If I turn this on, it sets a margin of zero and now we have margin CSS down here, margin of zero, but the auto. The auto is what is centering this for us. What is literally doing, it knows we have a 300 width here that we just set in size. And because it knows that, it can auto calculate our margins on the left and the right and it makes it the same number to give us a centered effect. So it's literally calculating whatever it needs to put over here, whatever it needs to put over here, plus the 300 in the middle, they give us our, our centered div. And in here, of course, I can set that back to left. So I could go in here and margin, and I could drop this down, and I could set you know 300 left, 300 right, and it would give me a center effect as well. This just does it for me automatically. And of course, if I change this to 30, that's gonna put 30 pixels all the way around but it knows because we have this auto turned on, you'll see 30 here, auto. It knows that uh, 
takes the extra space and auto calculate those so we still have our centered effect. So sort of advanced, sort of not. Just wanted to touch on that, that you may need to set either a size or you may need to play with the display settings, which I'm gonna jump into in a minute. So turn these off, we'll put this back to 15, close that up. So positioning, we talked we talked about that in the videos on how to move objects around. We have absolute, fixed, relative. I talked about the difference between absolute and relative. Fixed, fixed will always be that spot on the screen despite scrolling or moving anything around. If I tell it to go 100 pixels down, 100 pixels over, Despite scrolling, fix will stay right there. So for this example though, I want absolute. And absolute is gonna be relative to the screen and what's on it. So right now you'll see that when I change that, it changed the setting of this. So my CSS text dropped behind it. So if I go up here and I do 50 pixels from the top, what that does is it's telling this block, our yellow block to go 50 pixels from the top to the top of this. So from the left, if I were to do 150 now it's 50 pixels down and 150 pixels to the left of our object so in the same sense if I were to get rid of this I could do 20 from the right we have 20 over here I could do 20 from the bottom 20 over there and then if I were to go forward with this let's see it's on the bottom of that our display here if I were to move this it's gonna move with us preview it's always going to be on the bottom right, 20 pixels, 20 pixels. So another thing to show you, and you probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't design this way, but if I were to move this absolute, you can see that when I drag this around, this is going to drag up. What's going to happen is when I'm moving around, the left is going to take over, but the bottom is going to stay there. So we're going to have, we're going to have all four different settings now. So if I go back in there, spacing now you can see I have top right bottom left the right still set to 20 but the left left in CSS takes over so the left is actually going to be stronger so it's going to tell it to go left and then top we just set that by dragging it up there and our bottom still set at 20 so let's get rid of those so you can move things around you can move things around by dragging them in Celicor or you can come in here and say hey I want that to be 300 pixels from the left and that's where I want it to stay so you know, if you want one 300 and the other one 600, you know that they're spaced the same, or you can drag them there. All right, so next I'm gonna talk about display. So display, display and float sort of do the same things. We have inline, I'm gonna change our size back to nothing. So it's gonna jump. We're using a div. So div by default, our block level where I span would be inline. If I change this to inline, you see that it's just going to stretch to the width of the content plus plus our padding. Our padding is still around this. However, we lose our margin on the top. If we were to set this to inline block, we get our margin back. So the reason why inline works like a span. So if I have a paragraph and I just want to highlight one word in the middle of the paragraph, I would use a span. That way everything doesn't get wrapped around. It stays in the middle of that paragraph where a block level it's going to start a whole new row and inline block it's a way that I can line things up next to each other still hold the block level or inline I can line things up next to each other and we won't hold that block level so a little further example on that we'll set this back to block level or it's a div we don't need to set anything at all so I'm going to save this CSS and I'm going to change the background color we'll change this to a blue or something something light here we go Go forward with that now i'm just going to simply going to copy this html paste it again go back to this and i'm going to go into one i just saved and change it back to yellow so as you can see here we have our two block level divs with a margin which is why they don't go all the way to the edge of the screen so but they want to stretch all the way out which requires the next block level div to start below it and anything below this would force it to go below it be it an image more text would have to start below this because this is set to a block level so if I were to go in here edit my CSS change the spacing from block level which would be that that would be the same thing for us because we're using a div to inline block you can see now that it stretches down to just the width of the content and if I were to type something in here you can see it stretches with the content go to this one because this is still currently block level spacing display inline block 
and now you can see they're next to each other. Of course, they still have our margins in here. If I were to get rid of the margins, these would literally touch each other. So I had the margins in here so we can separate them out. So you can see that they're next to each other. Now, the way this works is that this will keep going across the screen for as many as we want, and it'll wrap when it gets to the edge of the screen. So if I were to bring this over here, you can see that it wraps because it has no more room for it. Put it back. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to paste it again. So now we have four of them. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put a little number or something on here so we know it's the new one. Double click on this one, edit CSS style. I also have the option when I'm spacing to use float. Float left, float left. You can see when I do this, this jumped up around that. This is how you like would put an image or something and float the text around it. I can float as many things next to each other I want and get the same effect up here. Of course, I can float this right. So when I do that, hit OK. You can see that now these are lined up over there, but our new one is now floating right. So this will always stay right. Of course, I can float all of them right, and they'd be lined up the exact same way over here. So we'll go back in there. We'll actually we'll undo that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to real quick edit CSS style spacing. I'm going to tell it to I'm gonna undo this. And I'm going to float it left, and now I'm going to save that CSS, and I'm just going to apply that CSS to all of them. Five. Five. Now they're all floating, even though it looks the same, they're all floating left, so it's kind of the same thing. Once again, if I drop this down, you'll see that they, they wrap over. Give it enough room for that third one. You can see how it wraps. So if I go in here, once again, we'll go back to our new one. Double click this, edit CSS style, spacing. They're all floating to the left. I can make them all float to the right. Well, now we're now going to talk about clear. Because I'm on this third one, let's say I wanted to start a new row with this one, but I still wanted these two to float next to each other, I have the option of clearing. Now, of course, I know it's floating left, so I could just clear to the left, or I could clear both. And clearing both would be clearing both left and right. I have nothing floating right, so that wasn't really matter. But you know, generally, I use both if I know I want to start, start a new row. So I'm still floating all four of my objects, but this one, I'm going to tell it does clear. So it's going to clear and start a new row. And when I go forward with this, now my new is down here. So these two are floating and these two are floating. So they would still wrap each other. If I were to drag this in here, you know, the new one dropped down. So that dropped down to the next level. That dropped down to the next level. So you can wrap items that way. It fits well in different screen sizes, but you can get objects next to each other. So go back in here, add a CSS style, spacing. And last thing I want to talk about is vertical align. So if I were to go in here and we'll we'll do the one up here. Actually, I'm going to I got so much going on there, I'm gonna start a new tab real quick. So we'll just we'll do some text. Do some text, start a div. Bear with me for a second. Do some more text. Start another div. All right, now edit CSS style. Size, we'll make them 300. Background color, turn it on. Spacing, inline block. Okay, I'm gonna save that CSS. Go down to our next one. Go to our next one. So now they're lined up next to each other. So this is what I wanted to show you real quick. So what happens is, as I space these down, that's gonna wanna, by default, line up on the bottom. You can see that we have our two here. This one, they're same color, but we have two different divs here. This naturally wants to line up on the bottom. So if I were to double click in here, edit our CSS style, go back, and our last thing we haven't talked about is vertical align. Vertical line doesn't line up the content in the box. It lines up the object itself with objects around it. So since I want to line them both to the top, I take this to the top, click OK. Now they're both lined up top with each other. So that's how that works. 
All right, guys, this has been Corey with SellerCore.com, the free auction template editor. I know some of the spacing features are more challenging. Please leave any questions or comments if you have any anything you want to say or any questions. I'm happy to help. Thank you, guys.